Well, I think starting out here, I'm gonna get the other shed cleaned out, gotta move some stuff. I'm gonna hook onto our planter and take it out to John Deere. We traded planters at the end of planting season and we ordered a new one. It's supposed to be in the 1st of October. So I told Deere, I said, well, you just as well have our old one now. It could be sitting on your lot in case you can get it sold or something. So get it out of our way, get it out there and see if they can find a new home for it. Well, there she is, boys. That's a 2014 John Deere 1790 1224 with liquid fertilizer. She's going to a new home. We traded it deer, uh, went to a 1632. So it's supposed to be in here in a couple weeks, but we just want to get this one out of the way. So this dude is headed to a new home. good this will throw the neighbors off up here picking corn they're gonna be like what the hell is he doing with the planter hooked on well i tell you what this is kind of a bastard going down the road as you can see you can't see anything behind you well normally my plant monitor's in here and i got a camera on the back and i can see out the back but that monitor's in the combine now so i ain't got nothing this sucks ass now i'm sure there's probably people out there thinking well, good God, what do you need a 16 row for 1,100 acres for? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I know, hell, tons of people around here that's got two planters for 2,000 acres, two 16 rows. So all we're doing is moving from 12 to 16. These guys got two of them. So I don't know, but these planting windows are a lot shorter than they, what they was when I was a kid. It seems like nowadays you got about seven days to plant the whole crop, and that's it. Otherwise, it's raining the whole time. So I don't know. We'll get her, but you know, there ain't no sense. I mean, we're about the only people around here that's only running one planter. I mean, everybody else is running at least two, some of them three. I mean, hell, we ain't gonna have $300,000 worth of planters sitting in the shed to plant 1,100 acres. I mean, that's stupid. At what point in time you just hire it done? So yeah, all we're doing, we're making the jump from a 30-foot planter up to a 40. That'll be sufficient for us. We're not into this planting beans and corn at the same time. I mean, it sounds good. and I mean, it works. I'd like to do it, but I, like I say, it's just an economic thing. I mean, I'm just not going to have that much machinery around for no more than we got. Well, looks like we got some neighbors shucking and trucking. We got her out here to John Deere. I hope she finds a good home. It's been a good planter. Now, if we could just take home one of these bad boys. 
Okay, so we got the planter out to deer. That's all done, taken care of. The new one, it's still on schedule to be here like October 1st or whatever, but I'm not worried about that at all. So now we had to come over here to the shed across the field over here by the pond. We got to get these two chisel plows out, take them back to the main farm, put them where the planter was. And the reason being is we got to get some room opened up in this shed because we got a couple trailers and just a few odds and ends sitting over there and they are kind of sitting around the bins. And once we set the auger up to that shivers bin, it generally sets there for a few weeks on end. So we don't want to get a bunch of shit blocked in with that auger. So we're going to make room in this shed to put that stuff over here, take the chisel plows over to the main farm. Well, we got to shuffle some stuff around too later on to get this drill out. We're actually going to drill some wheat this fall. We ain't sowed wheat for probably 10 years, I'd say. But uh, we got 15 acres, or well, it's 13 acres, whatever it is, that uh, needs some dirt work done on it. And you just can't seem to get it done in the spring and the fall with the, all the wet weather and all that stuff. So we're going to sow it to wheat, take the wheat off next summer, and then get the dirt work done.
Well, we're gonna go over here and check some corn. This is Pioneer 1464, planted on April 21st. <clears throat> and about, oh, you'll see. See this ditch up here in the field, right? Right ahead here. This is about the split in the dirt. So from this ditch, that way is all black dirt, just black muck. It's real low in there. We call this Robert's Pond, and a hundred years ago, this was literally underwater. You can see the green there. I had to go in and replant them surface ditches. There's a big surface ditch runs down through there. And I just went in and planted down it. I didn't try to plant it with the rows the way it was already planted. I just planted crossways because that was the easiest way to do it without tearing out a bunch more corn. And there's a little spot up there where I replanted. So you can see anything that was replanted, it's still pretty green. But yeah, right over in here, this is all pretty light soil here. Real light, in fact. But the thing is, is that dark soil, over there, you know, that corn, it always just kind of does its thing. It's like it matures better because it's, it's a lot more fertile soil. Where this over here tends to die down versus dry down. Not much green left in this compared to that field we looked at there with the Pioneer 1298. We'll go over here across the road. I done a bunch of replanting over here across the road. And it was the same way. <clears throat> These surface ditches are what drowned out. Well, I wasn't going to plant back and forth, you know, and go 400 grounds down that ditch. So I just went in and just planted down the son of a bitch. Because he's going to tear out more corn and it's going to be quicker anyway. So yeah, you can see the replant corn there. But that's about all I could do is just plant down that surface ditch. This is Pioneer 1197 here. It was planted April 21st also. Uh, it might have a little more green left in it by the looks of things. Another surface ditch up here that I had to replant. Usually when you got to do that, that's nothing more than weed control. It doesn't seem like that stuff will hardly make anything. So yeah, this got a little more green in it here. I don't know, just by looking at the plants, that 1464 looks drier, which doesn't make sense. That's 114 day corn versus 111. But, like I've always said, I've seen stranger things happen. I don't know, I just don't think this corn crop is going to be all that great. Originally, I was saying well above average, but no record. I don't know. I'm backing off now thinking maybe more like average. But, time will tell. 
So yeah, this is 1197 right here that we're on. And you can see the green in it. Which, you know, doesn't necessarily mean anything either. I mean... Well, let's bring her home. We'll run over here and get a few samples, maybe. Well, let's run grab a few samples of corn and see what we got. Well, once again, there ain't no sense in grabbing something that looks either way too dry or way too wet. I mean, we want to get a pretty reparative sample of what we got. But, with that being said, boy, just about... All these ears are hanging down for the most part, so that's good. You always want to give these stalks a push test, too. Just push on it. Yeah, now see, he buckled right there. That's not good. I mean, it ain't terrible yet, but I know most of you are going to say, well, that's pioneer corn for you, and I'm not going to deny that. So, let's see what we can get here. These are all hanging down. Let's take that one. Getting a little bit of a mold to it almost. Nothing major. I mean, that's not completely uncommon. I mean, let's hope to God that ain't all the way through the whole field. But every now and again, you'll see an ear like that. Tops are all breaking out of it. That's usually a sign that it's pretty dry. I can tell by feeling, though, it's still got a fair amount of moisture in it. There's no question about that. The question is, is it 25 or 28 or what? Let's run over here and grab a sample of this 1197. I probably won't take the camera. That's about a nine-way clusterfuck trying to film walking through all that shit. So I'll jump in there, get a few samples of that, and then we'll run back to the shop and run her through the tester. We'll get back to the shop here and see what the tester shows, but it sure feels to me like that 1197 is a lot wetter. It definitely looks wetter and it even feels wetter, so let's go take a look. We'll do this 1464 first, rip into it, see what it shows. Yeah, it's wet. Tell already. Two fifty. Twenty-seven. Now this here is at 1197. Now you can tell it is a little drier. You can tell by the way it's hitting the pan and it's just coming off the cob a lot easier. Now, you know whether or not that's 23 or 4, I don't know. But I mean it, it is quite a bit drier than that 1464. So even though the 14 looked drier in the field, I think this 1197 is going to be the dryer, which it should be. It's 111 day corn, and that's 114 day, and it's planted the same day. So we'll see what happens here.
25.8. Well, I'm going to run these samples down to the elevator, have them check them. I know they're wet. There's there's no question about that. Uh, the 1464 on three samples averaged 27, and the 1197 on three samples averaged 25.5. And you can tell just by feeling they're wet. There's no question there. But I just want to compare my tester to the elevators. So as we start getting closer to harvest, when we start taking more hand samples, I'll know that it's you know a point or two off or for whatever. So we'll head down there, see what they say. I'm just leaving the elevator. And the 1197 that I showed an average of 25.5 on, they showed an average of 24.7. And the 1464, I showed an average of 27, and they showed an average of 25.2. So that's good news. Everything's a little bit drier than what we thought it was. But uh, with numbers like that, I mean, yeah, it's going to be at least Monday, probably the middle of next week. Um, we're just, well, we're not even quite ready, really. we got to get our new truck. It's supposed to have been done today. Hopefully, we can go pick it up tomorrow. Um, so we got to get that done. We started to get the trucks tested. There's just a few odds and ends. So it'll be next week, I'd say, before we're ready. And also, I mean, you never, ever, ever start on a Friday. So no matter if we're ready or not, we won't be starting on Friday. It's been a couple days since we took that corn down to the elevator and had it tested. Uh, had some really good drying weather these last couple days. It's been uh, no humidity and a lot of wind. So... Uh, it's really worked out nice for the corn. She's a coming right down. But anyway, I wanted to show you this new rig. Check this out. We just went and picked this up this morning. 2013 Freightliner. Got a Cummins motor in it. 20 foot con bed, live tandem. Uh, it does have def on it. But this is a pretty sweet rig. Got automatic transmission. Power windows, power mirrors, backup cam. It's a nice truck, 168,000 miles on it. We had a 99 Chevy. It's in one of them other videos. It was white, but it had a red steel bed on it. Uh, we traded it off for this. So uh, yeah, this is a, a nice truck. We kind of bought this sight unseen. Um, some of you guys might be familiar with Goebel equipment in Montrose, Illinois. Deals in real nice trucks like this. That's where we got it. Um, our international truck that we got come from there about 10, 12 years ago. <clears throat> but he deals in high quality stuff. Real good guy, real good to deal with. Uh, would highly recommend checking out his website or driving down there and checking out his trucks. But uh, yeah, we kind of bought this sight unseen. Um, we was down there looking at another international about a month ago and kind of thought maybe we was going to buy it. And he had a Freightliner just like this sitting there. And we thought, ah, oh, heck, let's go ahead and just drive it. You know, since it's here, I mean, he'd already sold the truck. We couldn't buy that one. So uh, we jumped in it, and holy cow. I mean, it. Uh, we thought the International was nice, but boy, the Freightliner was, had a lot more power. Uh, the interior is a lot different. It's a real nice interior compared to the International. And of course, this truck was a little bit newer than the International that we drove, so we weren't necessarily comparing apples and apples straight up. But, uh, but yeah, uh, this thing is a nice truck. So we ended up... Uh, buying this thing more or less sight unseen he had just the truck and the chassis sitting there he had to take it and have a bed put on it to the guy that whoever does all his bed work so um, yeah we ended up getting this sight unseen and we were extremely happy with it so today is friday september the 18th i believe uh that corn that i hand sampled and took to the elevator that's been three days ago now i think it was 24 and a half then, so uh, we've had some really good drying weather. Uh, no humidity, a lot of wind, so that's really going to help dry the corn down. So it's looking like we're probably going to go to the field maybe Tuesday-ish next week, I would say. Uh, probably won't do it Monday. we got to get the grain trucks tested, get the auger set up, and, you know, there's just always a few odds and ends you got to get done right before you go to the field. So we'll probably spend Monday doing all that and then hit the ground running Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, we'll just have to kind of see how it goes. Um, I don't think we're going to run into anything that's going to be so wet that we're going to have to quit. You know, I'm not saying it's going to be dry. I mean, we usually start when the corn is around 23%. Got a big shivers system here, so we'll start drying some corn. Uh, beans for us are, oh gosh, hell, they're two weeks off. Anyway, maybe 
a little bit longer than that. Now there is some guys around here that, well, some guys have already cut a few beans and some guys got some that'll be ready the first of the week, but we personally don't have any. So yeah, that's kind of what's coming up here. Um, I think we're gonna go ahead and end this video right here, but be on the lookout next week. If I can get all this shit organized and things going good that first day out the gate, I'll try to get you guys some quick video, start harvest and get a video up next week too you know so you're not having to wait a week or two on it so we'll just have to see how it goes that first day of harvest can kind of be a real bastard getting everything set and tweaked and you know you got to get in and out of the combine about 15 times while you're trying to get everything tweaked so we'll see how it goes so yeah be on the lookout next week don't forget to hit that subscribe button thanks for watching tell all your friends and get ready because harvest is upon us thanks for watching